Hello, and welcome to Now Where Were We? A series of short videos about the history of Olympia, Lacey, and surrounding areas. Your host for this program is Deborah Ross. In this series, Deb takes us to locations that inform us about the history of our community. She also visits with local historians. We welcome your feedback and suggestions. Hello and welcome to another episode of Now Where Were We, an ongoing series of short videos about the history of Olympia and surrounding areas. I'm Deborah Ross and I'm standing on the porch of the Bigelow House, operated as a museum by the Olympia Historical Society and Bigelow House Museum. Daniel Bigelow came west on the Oregon Trail and arrived here in Olympia in what was then Oregon Territory in 1851. He soon filed a 160-acre claim under the Donation Land Act. Daniel was an attorney and was one of those most responsible for successfully lobbying Congress and the President to have the area north of the Columbia River designated its own territory. When Washington became a territory in 1853, Daniel served on a commission in charge of creating its first set of laws. In 1854, Daniel married Anne Elizabeth White, who had also come across on the Oregon Trail. We will be learning more about Anne Elizabeth and the White family in a later episode. After a short period of living in a log cabin, they built this home in the late 1850s, where their eight children were born and raised. This very early photograph shows the home from a crossbud inlet surrounded by fields. The property had orchards, a garden, and livestock, and was served by an artesian well, which is just above us and still exists to this day. The Bigelows were staunch Methodists and helped establish the first Methodist church here, which still exists as the First United Methodist Church of Olympia. They also supported schools and were involved in the establishment of Methodist affiliated schools as well as public schools. In 2013, Panorama visited the Bigelow House with historian and docent Shanna Stevenson. And the rest of this video will be excerpts from that video in which Shanna shows us some of the important objects and features of the his this historic house and talks a little bit more about the Carpenter Gothic style of architecture. Welcome to the historic Bigelow House at 918 East Glass Avenue in Olympia. Uh, it is likely one of the oldest houses in Olympia, if not the oldest, built by 1860. It's a Gothic Revival style house. It's owned by the nonprofit Bigelow House Preservation Association, and today we're going to take a little tour through the house. Well, we're in what uh, we call the library of the house, and uh, you'll notice the beautiful uh, wallpapers throughout the house. Um, they reflect the period of the house and were part of the restoration of the house in the 1990s. Uh, the nonprofit uh, Bigelow House Preservation Association acquired the house in the 1990s and then the last generation of the Bigelows lived in the house until 2005. In this room are some very interesting uh, furnishings and throughout the house you'll see only the furnishings uh, that the Bigelows had in the house. So everything here is very authentic and contribute to the character of the house. This is Daniel Bigelow's law desk, at least the top part of it, which uh, the family has said that he brought with him over the Oregon Trail, and it's a standing desk, which would have been popular at that time. We have a number of other items that he brought with him over the Oregon Trail, and likely items uh, that Aunt Elizabeth White brought, too. Uh, we have many of his law books, and we have a wonderful collection of books and papers in the house. 
Both Daniel and Anne Elizabeth White Bigelow were strong advocates for women's rights and women's suffrage. And uh, Susan B. Anthony visited the house for dinner uh, here when she visited uh, Washington Territory. And uh, she talked about coming to the house. Uh, she said that Mrs. Bigelow was splendid. And uh, it's likely that she even sat in this chair. Uh, Daniel Bigelow uh, was a member of the legislature at the time she visited Olympia and he escorted her to the dais of the legislature when she addressed uh, the body. Anne Elizabeth White Bigelow was a member of uh, the Washington Territory Women's Suffrage Association, very prominent in advocating for women's right to vote. You'll begin to see some of the wonderful musical instruments in the house. The Steinway Piano, uh, we uh, contacted the Steinway Company and they said, oh, you know, that came around the horn and was sold to a family by the name of Bigelow. We're in another of the period decorated rooms of the Bigelow House, uh, again featuring a lot of musical instruments. Of course, during the time people made their own entertainment and so the Bigelows uh, were very interested in music and that's reflected in the house. Also in this room are some really beautiful uh, handcrafts that were done by uh, members of the Bigelow family, probably the women of the family. These shell frames are very unique. Uh, the family story is that uh, they would go down to the Port of Olympia when the ships came in with ballast and they would look through what, what was in the, the ballast and pick out the shells and create these beautiful shell pictures. Among the real treasures of the house is this sewing box uh, that belonged to the family and there's an example of some of the handwork uh, of the women of the family. Uh, there's a lot of women's history in the house from Susan B. Anthony uh, to Anne Elizabeth Bigelow to the achievements of the Bigelow daughters uh, who were teachers and prominent members of the community as well. We're now in the dining room of the house and it reflects a little later period of the house both in the wall coverings, uh, the window coverings and the light fixtures. Daniel Richardson Bigelow died after the turn of the 20th century. Anne Elizabeth White Bigelow uh, lived until the 1920s and as I mentioned, generations of the Bigelows continue to live in the house. Um, this room then reflects the, the later uh, period. Uh, we also have many of the original pieces of dishware, uh, glassware, and other accoutrements of the family, and uh, a lot of the, again, original furnishings that belong to the Bigelows. Uh, as we uh, interpret the house, we interpret the long period of history of the Bigelows in the house as well as their role in Olympia history. And so we've decided to restore this room as a 1950s kitchen, reflecting that period of the house. Uh, the house has such a distinctive architecture. It's called Carpenter Gothic and uh, was popular during the period, although when this house was built, it was a little out of fashion from the East Coast. Uh, you'll see a lot of distinctive elements, including the trim, uh, the steep gables, uh, the arched front window, and all the detailing on the porches. And it's considered one of the best examples of the Gothic Revival period uh, in the state of Washington. Uh, it really reflects uh, one family's idea of having uh, a pretty impressive house in the new town of Olympia. I hope you've enjoyed this visit to the historic Bigelow House located in Northeast Olympia. The museum is open on Sunday afternoons or by appointment by contacting the email address shown at the end of this video. Till next time, I'm Deborah Ross.